Hello everybody and welcome to module 11. And now we're looking at hypothesis testing on variances. Variances or, of course, standard deviations. Everything that I talk about in this module, I'm generally going to be referring to variances, but it's all applicable to standard deviations as well. So don't think that it only works on variances, okay? Now, why? Why do we want to do tests on variances? Well, remember, if we go back to the beginning of module nine, if you're thinking about those single population tests on a mean, let's say we we're doing a test to see whether or not the mean was equal to six or not. Well, what did you do in this exercise? Well, remember, we, we were dealing with some unknown population, right? Let's say that this circle, this represents our population of data. We knew that that population has some population mean, but we didn't know what that was. So we would reach into that population and we would draw a sample. So here I take a sample, some sample size, whatever that was, and we calculated the sample mean. And that sample mean was always my point estimate of the unknown population mean. Well, of course, we understand at this point that every sample that I draw is going to have a different sample mean. None of those sample means are going to be exactly equal to the population mean, but it, they're our best guess. And we know that those sample means are all normally distributed, so we can calculate that test statistic, probably a t-test, maybe a z-test, and then we can determine whether or not we have evidence to show from that sample do we have evidence to support either the null hypotheses or the alternative hypotheses. Now, think about what it meant if, let's just say for sake of discussion, if our evidence supported the null hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is that the average is six. So okay, let's, let's say we have a distribution here and we know that it has an average, what an awful looking distribution. We know that it has an average of six, okay? if the null is in fact true, that has an average of six. Well, this distribution that I've just drawn has an average of six, but this distribution here also has an average of six. And this distribution here also has an average of six. So what I'm getting at, of course, is that those tests on averages, they're useful. It gives us some understanding of the location of that distribution, right? Its address. The location is located, or the distribution is located on the number six, as opposed to being greater than six or less than six, right? But what it doesn't tell us is anything about the shape of that distribution. In other words, okay, so if the null is in fact true, so the average is six, we might be interested in knowing whether or not the distribution or the observations are really closely packed around that average. In other words, the variance is very small, or maybe the variance is very large and the distributions are really spread out. Still has the same average, but the distributions might be really spread out. That might be important to us. You know, think about if we're doing some sort of a manufacturing process and we're making a part that goes into a jet engine, I, I don't know. And so it's really important that the average be, let's say, six inches, right? The average size or diameter or whatever. The average, we want it to be six inches. Well, it's important that it be very precise. We can't have a manufacturing process that produces something with an average of six inches but has a really large variance because all of those parts that are too big or too small, maybe they're just completely useless. We really need it to be precise. So we need a really small variance as well. So again, if we think back to just generally what we're doing, we have this population, we're taking samples, 
from that population. And so far, all we've looked at is the sample mean. Well, each of those samples, whoops, also has, of course, a sample variance. And so with each sample that we draw, we can use the point estimate of the mean to, to do testing and analysis on the average, but we also can use the point estimate of the variance or the standard deviation to do analysis, to draw inference about the nature of that population variance. So maybe in this context, we might set a target and say, you know, we, yeah, we want the mean to be six, but we also need the variance has to be maybe less than some particular value. I don't know, less than two. Just making numbers up. So if that's the level of precision that we need, well, then we can use that sample. But rather than using the point estimate of the mean, we're going to use the point estimate of the variance. And so now we can do really all the same kind of tests. I can do a lower tail test, upper tail test, two tail test. What's going to be different? Because that process is the same. Drawing a sample, calculating a test statistic, the formula is going to be different. Getting that test statistic, p-value, rejection, interpretation, that process is the same. But now, because we're looking at a variance, not a sample mean. The sample mean we knew was normally distributed, so we used the t-distribution. But that sample mean, well, it's based on a normal distribution because those calculations, those deviations, are normally distributed. But when we square those and add those together, well, now this follows a different distribution. Dividing by degrees of freedom doesn't really change anything, but this follows a different distribution. This follows what is called a chi-square distribution. A chi-square distribution is what you get when you add together a bunch of squared normal variables. That's the only difference. The, the consequence is that the formula is going to be a little bit different, and some of the notation might be a little bit different, but, you know, those are details. The chi-square distribution, okay, it has a different shape. It's not bell curved anymore because we're squaring things. So not only is it now going to be asymmetric, because when we square something, we put different weights on different values, right? 100 times 100, 100 squared, right? I'm putting a greater weight on larger values and smaller weights on smaller values. So the distribution becomes asymmetric and there's no more negative values, again, because everything is squared. So my distribution is really going to start to look kind of bell-shaped, but never perfectly symmetric like a normal distribution or a t-distribution. And certainly, there'll never be any negative values. That's, that's really it. The test statistic, well, because we're working with a different distribution, our test statistic is a little bit different. Well, okay, it's quite different, but it's similarly simple in its calculation. And so that's really all we have to worry about as far as what's going to be different in these tests on variance. Again, the process is the same. We don't need to get bogged down with any of the details about, you know, the particulars of that distribution. This isn't an advanced course in, in probability theory. For hypothesis testing, all I'm interested in is the types of test that we can do, our single population tests, we have a little bit of understanding about the fact that it follows a different distribution when we're looking at sample variances. My test statistic formula is a little bit different, but the process is the same. Formulating the test, stating the level of significance, calculating your test statistic, getting critical values or p-values, drawing your conclusion, interpreting that conclusion. Very, very, very similar. 
Now, these are all tests on single population variances. Well, you bet we can also do tests looking at two population variances, where I might want to compare the variance of one population against the variance of another population. And we can have two-tailed tests, we can have one-tailed tests, very, very similar. Our level of significance still has the same meaning, but now, Again, our distribution changes. Now when we're looking at two variances, now we're going to use the F distribution. The F distribution is the ratio of two chi-squared variables. So when we look at single population tests, we work with the chi-squared distribution. And that brings us to the ability to do tests on two population variances, which uses the F distribution. Chi-square distribution, we are going to be concerned about degrees of freedom. This is going to have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. When we're looking at the F distribution, it's going to be same, but a little bit different. We're still going to have degrees of freedom, but now we're going to have numerator degrees of freedom because that chi-squared variable in the numerator has n minus 1 degrees of freedom and we're going to have denominator degrees of freedom because that chi-squared in the denominator has n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And so we might have samples of different size, we'll have different degrees of freedom, numerator and denominator. It doesn't really complicate things much. When you see the distribution tables that we're going to need for that, they're a little intimidating, but you'll do just fine with them. The process of the testing is absolutely the same as what we've been doing since module 9. Okay, so I'll leave that as our very brief introduction to tests on variance. In this one module, we're going to be doing both single population tests on variance and Two population tests on variance will be using the chi-square distribution and the F distribution. Aside from these small little differences, you will be an expert at the process of hypothesis testing because it is entirely the same as what we've been doing since module 9. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching.